Well, hello and welcome back to the Ten Born. I'm Pragmatic Lee, and today we've got a new video project for you. Um, sometime back in uh, a couple of Adam Booth's videos, I saw him using a tool where he was it was basically a belt sander, but it was handheld, um, and he was using it. It was portable enough. Uh, that he was using it uh, to polish items in his lathe. Uh, basically had a, a long, I think he was probably using a, a one inch by maybe 36 inch or 40 inch belt. Uh, but it kind of got my interest up and I was looking around for him. Uh, found some for sale online, similar, anywhere from $300 to $800, $900. And obviously I didn't want to put that much into them. But as I was looking, I stumbled across a, uh, uh, a thread on the hobbymachinist.com forum uh, that a man named R. Dean, Ray Dean, uh, posted it. He was making these pipe sanders, is what he called it, and that seems to be the uh, generic name for them. He was making these using uh, grinders from Harbor Freight. He would buy the grinder. Uh, make the rollers, make the mounting plate and the arms, and sell them. And there seemed to be a lot of, he said he had right much interest in them, but the uh, Harbor Freight went up on the price of them. They changed the model, uh, and he, he said it just got to where it wasn't economical for him to, to make them and resell them, or buy the pieces and uh, make, uh, do the machine work and resell it. So he published his plans on, uh, on hobbymachinist.com or posted them there, and I'm going to uh, quick. Well, I'm going to show you a picture now of what his end result was, and then I'll go through about I think it's four or five slides and show you his prints. This is his end result right here. As you can see, again, that's mounted onto or made onto a, uh, a Harbor Freight grinder. Now we'll take a quick look at his plans. Ray's plans are not complete. Uh, uh, you'll have to come up with a couple measurements on there yourself. Uh, uh, it is for a 30 inch belt. He does not specify in there, but it's for a one inch by 30 inch belt. Uh, but if you happen to have one of those Harbor Freight uh, grinders, I believe he said they were from model 91222 or the 91223 angle grinders. And you desire to follow his plans, uh, of course, you're welcome too. Mine will be a little bit different. I'm using Ray's uh, plans as a starting point. The first thing you need to look at on a grinder, though, this is my Dewalt grinder. Uh, had for several years. Notice though, this part right here. There are no holes there. The the holes that put it together are on the back side. Which that doesn't uh, that doesn't allow for for mounting a plate on that. So I decided to, since the closest Harbor Freight to me is about an hour away, and I've got a Lowe's just down the road from me, I went to Lowe's to see what they had, and I got this uh, Porter Cable uh, Porter Cable brand. It's a model PC. 750AG. I think it's about a $39 grinder. Notice that it's got the screws are on the same side as the drive pin, so it'll be easy enough to mount a plate. Now, if you get one of these and you look at it and you say, hey, mine's different than Lee's. Yes, it is. This originally came with the head turned 90 degrees down. This is the top right here. 
Well, I found that this is uh, symmetrical across here, and take those, took these four screws out of the end and turn that head 90 degrees, and once we get the, uh, uh, the pipe sander on there, the, the grinder itself will still be in its natural position. One word of warning, though. When you take these screw, four screws out to turn this head 90 degrees, it's not for the faint of heart. The brushes back here, if you pull this out too far, those brushes are spring-loaded, and you will wind up having to disassemble the whole thing to put it back together, which is what I did, and it took about four or five times to ever get the trigger back right. All right, enough of that. What we're going to do first is make the plate uh, to mount on here. So I'm going to get the camera repositioned so that you can see what I'm doing, and we'll go through the, the steps of how we determine the plate size. All right, I'm going to leave this up here for just a second if you want to, again, make a screenshot of that to, uh, to follow along with you if you decide to come back and, and make, this, uh, make one of these pipe sanders yourself. But this is a piece of a 3 inch by 6 inch by 3 16 thick flat bar. And I'm not a plans drawer uh, at all. So you may need to come back later and see uh, with this in hand to, to be able to keep up with what I'm doing here. But the first thing we're going to look at is how I come up with this diameter right here, this 2 inch diameter. That is the diameter for this. That 2 inch diameter in here is for this boss right here. Now, needing to know where to put it, I went with halfway the six inch piece. All right. Now, how far from the bottom? Well, what I did was, uh, of course, I didn't want to run into these sides here, so I just took my scale, placed it there, and using a, a block, determined that there was a quarter inch between that. So, if this is a two inch circle, from the edge here, we're going to come up 1.25 inches to start the hole three inches from the end. And that will be the center. I've got one end of this uh, squared off. I'm going to mount this over in the uh, mill, and we're going to start work on that. All right, remember this is a piece of three inch wide by six inch long, three sixteenths uh, thick flat bar. Uh, the dimensions on this, uh, all but the four bolt hole patterns, none of the other dimensions are critical enough that we've really got to uh, bring out the edge finder and such. So I just uh, scribed over three inches from this end and an inch and a quarter from the bottom. Remember the inch and a quarter is one inch is radius on the circle, and the other quarter inch is clearance to the side of the uh, grinder head the gear head on the grinder. So I've got that in there. I'm going to put a starter hole and we're going to drill and bore this out to two inches. All right, that's as large a drill bit as I have, so we'll get the boring bar out, but before, before we do that, all right, what we want to do is go ahead and mark and drill uh, our other holes. We've got two holes down here at this end, two quarter inch holes that are a half inch from each edge. This is what the fixed bar will mount to. Okay, so we also have a, a hole down here that the swinging arm will mount to. 
It is also a half inch from this edge. And it is four inches from from the end of our piece. Okay, down in this corner we have a smaller hole for the uh, for the spring to mount in, and that is five and a half inches from the end of the piece. And this is just for the spring to hook in, and it's point three inches from this edge. All right, quick recap. These two holes are for the uh, fixed arm. They are a half inch from each edge of the, the uh, front, top edge, bottom edge, and the end, half inch in. We also have a hole down here that the uh, swinging arm will pivot on, which is uh, four inches from the end, half inch down. Then we have a 11 64th hole down here that is five and a half inches from the end and 0.3 inches from the bottom edge. So I'm going to get set up and drill those. I do have my DRO set right now on zero. So I can come back to this center point once we get the uh, board head mounted in. All right, I'm going to get the boring, bar, boring head in there now and bring it back to our center point over here and we'll start boring out the two inch hole. I'm back on center now or back on my, uh, my center point for the hole and I'm going to bore this out. This particular setup requires that I start in the center hole and bore, bore out almost to the max uh, and then move the boring boring bar over. I'm pretty sure I will have to move it over. But we want to bore this out to two inches. Of course that is one inch at, at currently from the drill bit. And being only three sixteenths inch thick, we should be able to take a, a pretty good bite at the time. Okay, I'm getting about to the limit of the uh, boring head now. So I'm going to bring that back to center, move the uh, boring bar over to the outside hole, and continue this process. I'll bring you back when we get a, a little closer to the uh, two inch mark. All right, I think we got about one more pass. Again, this is not extremely crucial, just as long as it clears that, that housing.
that's two inches. So now what we want to do is lay out the bolt hole pattern. The bolt hole pattern is four holes that are symmetrical to one another there at 45, 45 degrees off of this uh, bottom, off of the bottom here. So I'll get the boring head back out and uh, get it out and get the uh, drill chuck put back in. Okay, hopefully it's not washed out too bad on there, but I want, what I wanted to do was show you on the DRO setting up for this bolt hole pattern. First off, we select the bolt hole icon on here. And what are we gonna use? Uh, X, Y axis or the X, Z axis? Of course, on a vertical mill, we're using the X, Y axis. So enter on that. Where are we starting? We're starting from center at zero, zero. What's the diameter of our uh, circle? We can see on here, the diameter is 2.66. I got that from measuring across the holes on the grinder itself. So 2.66, enter. Down there, a number of the holes. There will be four holes in there. Enter. Then down there, the starting angle is 45 degrees. Remember, on a circle, normally the three o'clock position is zero start. We want to start at four uh, at 45 degrees. Ending angle is 315. That's 360 minus the 45. So our number one hole is 0 0.940. We'll bring X and Y back to zero. So there's Y at zero and X at zero. And I think those are four millimeter uh, bolts holding that in. So we're going to use the same 1164s that we used for the spring hole. Now over on the DRO, I'm going to hit the down arrow. That brings me to hole two. Y position stays the same. X, we move to the other side. And again, I'll continue this process. Uh, it says hole three. Of course, now the X stays in the same position, and we move down to the Y. Move the Y, bring it to zero. And finally, the fourth hole. Y stays in the same position. Move the X back to zero. Back to zero on the bolt hole pattern. All right, I'm going to deburr this. Also, we'll come from the six inch mark over here. On this inch, on this end, we'll run a 25 degree angle. And I'll carry that to the bandsaw. The bandsaw is in there in part of my shop where it's not conducive to carry the camera. But I'll cut that off on the 25 degree and then simply carry it over to the uh, belt sander and round the corners off. All right, let me take just a minute and recap uh, this mounting plate right here because I think I might have given you some incorrect dimensions uh, while it was in the uh, lay, while it was in the mill. I've carried it over to the uh, uh, to the bandsaw, cut the 25 degree angle off, rounded off the corners. That 25 degree angle started at the six inch mark from this end down here. I believe I told you this hole right here was four inches. It was four inches from the center of this hole, but four and a half from the end. So the piece is three inches by six inches. These two holes are a quarter inch I'm sorry, a half inch from each edge, and they're quarter inch holes. This is a half inch down from that edge, 
and four and a half inches from this edge over here. Disregard that that point three that I had over there. The, the best way to get this measurement is of course from from the solid edge. These were quarter inch holes. This hole down here is well I forgot to mark that on there too. That is five and a half inches from this edge to that hole and point three from the bottom. That is what the spring will hook in. Five and a half inches from that edge over here. The center hole is centered on the, the six inch axis, on the y -ax, x axis, and one and a quarter inches from the edge over to here. 1.25 inches, two inch diameter. The hole pattern on the, on the grinder itself diagonally was 2.66, which of course is the diameter then. So that's what we laid out the four holes, and they were 11 64 as well. So here's our, here's our finished piece. We will try it right quickly on the grinder. So there is the, the plate mounted on the grinder itself. The next thing we need to do is work on some, a couple of arms. We need a fixed arm that will screw across here, stick out here, and then we'll need an arm off of here that can pivot on this point. That pivot arm will be attached to the plate uh, via a spring down here as well. I have a little drawing of those. These arms will be made from quarter inch by one inch, uh, one inch wide, quarter inch thick, flat bar. The fixed arm is 9.75 inches long, quarter inch hole, a half inch from this end edge. Second hole is two and a half inches from the edge. Half inch hole for the roller, 9.125 inches from the, from the end down here. Everything is measured from this bottom end. Let me back the camera up just a moment so you can see what I am pointing to. All right, from this bottom edge right here, from this end, 0.5 inches for the first quarter inch hole, 2.5 inches for the second quarter inch hole, then 9.125 inches uh, for the half inch hole. What I'll actually do is lay the bar up there on the, uh, on the mounting plate and transfer those holes. The pivot arm is seven inches long from this end down here, a quarter inch hole is at 0.5 inches. Half inch hole at 6.25 inches. And then at three inches, we have 11 64 hole. So starting from the bottom, we have a quarter inch hole, half inch from that edge. We have 11 64 hole, three inches from that edge, and that is a quarter inch off the edge right here. That is a quarter inch off of this, this vertical edge just for that spring to hook in. And then at 6.25 inches, we have a half inch hole. I'm not gonna try to show you that. That's just a piece of flat bar, drilling some holes in, and then I'll carry them over to the uh, uh, belt grinder. The uh, uh, belt grinder I built in a series just a couple months ago uh, and round off these edges. All right, here is the fix bar. 
And here is the uh, swinging bar. So let's see if we can mount those on the grinder itself. And you might can see when I carried the uh, mounting plate over to the grinder to round off the corners, I got a little carried away. There was no real need to round in this corner off because it's going to be hid behind uh, behind the uh, fixed arm. The drawing that Mr. Dean had, or the picture of his, show these arms being mounted on the bottom of the plate. But I decided to mount mine on the top of the plate. That way, when we get to making the bushings, uh, bushings won't have to be quite as long. This will basically uh, take it uh, 9 sixteenths, uh, 7 sixteenths off the length of the, the bushings. You'll see when we get to the rollers. Now this will be attached with a uh, uh, and just tight enough so it can swivel. I'll have a nylon uh, lock nut on that. But before we put that in, let's mount the spring. Okay folks, sorry I, I had to move the camera out of the way. It was right in my way to get the uh, spring attached. This spring uh, is an inch and a half coil by 0 0.6, I think that would be probably an inner diameter of 0 0.5. It was in one of these uh, spring assortment uh, from Lowe's. The part number on that was 543-000. It was just one of the assortments. There were two of them in that bag of that size. So I've got that hooked in our swivel arm and the plate. And mount that in. Again, this will be with the nylon washer, lock washer. The next thing we need to work on are some rollers. We basically have our frame here, so we need some rollers, some bushings, and then we can install the belt.